been in that spacecraft since 8 o'clock. That's uh, three hours and 20 minutes now. And uh, you know, those space, uh, the, the seats in the space capsule are most uncomfortable uh, when the capsule is on the ground, not in a weightless state, in other words. They actually form something of a V. That is, the back is bent forward a little bit. You sit in this position. And it's pretty hard to sit there uh, for a very long time. The back gets terribly tired, particularly with that uh, uh, rather cumbersome uh, space suit on. The reason the seat is made in that form is because it has been determined that the body can best take the tremendous uh, g-forces of rapid acceleration and deceleration the spacecraft goes through when it is fitted into the seat in that fashion, rather than lying back even more. Uh, of course, uh, when the plane is in, when the spacecraft's in orbit, uh, this does not apply because then the weightless state, the body is floating free and is simply restrained in the seat by uh, by uh, belts and uh, other webbing. Gemini uh, Seven is now just completing its 119th revolution, just passing over the coast of uh, Lower California and will be back uh, over the Cape uh, very shortly now, as you can see from our Kozman orbital map. The Gemini 7 flight at 1.26, just two hours and uh, three, four minutes from now, will set a new space record. It already has exceeded the best the Russians have been able to do, but then there's the erector going up at pad 19. The erector uh, going uh, to, to be put back into position, uh, the white room again enclosing uh, the uh, spacecraft so that uh, Seurat and Stafford can step back out and into the elevator to come back to uh, Earth disappointed of course, that their Gemini 6 mission had to be scrubbed and uh, at the same time undoubtedly somewhat relieved that first of all, they escaped uh, disaster when that engine did fire for a short burst. And second of all, as test pilots undoubtedly happy that they and their ground crew performed so magnificently in uh, a potentially dangerous situation. Uh, Everybody apparently did their job just exactly as they had trained for it in the face of this problem. The erector will be up uh, and around the uh, spacecraft in another five uh, or ten minutes and ready to recover Shara and Stafford. Meanwhile, Gemini 7 goes on, as we say, and perhaps uh, with this clear air, they will be able to even see the Erector going back up. I don't know whether they get that good a view or not, but they did see the ignition when they passed over two orbits ago. Oh, just one orbit ago, I guess. There, they will be just about over the uh, pad 19 in another three minutes. And now an announcement from uh, Gemini Control at the Cape, Jack Cape. This is Gemini Launch Control at the Cape. The 183-foot erector at Launch Complex 19 is now being raised back to its position uh, in closing the launch vehicle. As soon as the erector is fixed in place, the Gemini 6 pilots, Wally Shara and Tom Stafford, will leave the spacecraft. We are still on minimum conditions at Launch Complex 19. That is, we have a small crew near the pad making an assessment of our situation. A minimum crew also will be permitted to go up into the white room once the erector is in place to assist the astronauts on departing from the spacecraft. We expect that Chira and Stafford should be out some 10 to 15 minutes from now. We will now switch to the mi Mission Control Center in Houston. This is Houston. The spacecraft is directly over Houston right now and the crew has just performed another fuel cell purge. Everything looks fine aboard Gemini 7. And uh, let's stand by there to see if we can get some conversation from 7. Uh, they're in the process of raising the erector at the Cape at this time. Thank you. Very good. Gemini 7 is 
seven, Texas Capcom. Go ahead. I'd like to get a cryogenic quantity readout at this time. Would you uh, place your readout switch to the ECS-02 position? Roger, ECS-02. Seven Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Have flight plan update when you're ready to copy. Go ahead, Houston. MSC four one nine zero two seven. Zero, zero. Sequence, zero, one. Mode, this is a picture from our zero, camera one. in the erector. As the erector Two comes up alongside of the Titan spacecraft, or the Gemini spacecraft, in the scene you see here from the distant camera. And we're listening to uh, the voice of astronauts in Gemini 7 reporting to Houston as they're overhead. And this is a White Sands Pass. However, it is a very good White Sands Pass. It'll be the, about the closest one we've had, and the weather there is clear. Roger, I understand, and they check their board setting over. Uh, supposedly they have, and they're ready to go. Thank you. Okay, next item, 190-4000. This Exercise. tape is being delayed uh, shortly. That was a report uh, as they came over the coast of Southern California talking about uh, a pass over White Sands Proving Ground where they hope to make a contact with the laser communications beam. We'll tell you more about that later. Heat period. MSC 2 and 3. 190-5000. Sequence. Zero two, same time as the start of each period. And this is that uh, picture from the uh, white room, as the uh, as the erector and the white room close around the Gemini spacecraft inside there. Shara and Stafford have been there now three and a half hours, and who an hour and uh, thirty six minutes ago had that great booster light up below them, only to shut down one and a half seconds later, automatically, when it, something went wrong in the system. And the safety uh, uh, precautions took over, and the engine shut down. What went wrong in preliminary analysis seems to be a loose tail plug, which won't require very much to fix. But meanwhile, the Gemini will have to be refueled and the mission has been set for Thursday morning, 8.43 a.m. Very shortly now, the elevator will be going up there with technicians to bring Shara and Stafford back. We have been listening to, to Borman and Lovell in Gemini 7 as they passed over the United States, and they were reporting that the weather was apparently the best they have had yet to attempt to uh, the, to attempt to establish communications through a laser beam. 
a light beam from the spacecraft. And there are the first uh, technicians up in uh, the white room. They will begin to, they're waving, uh, shaking their head and uh, waving in to Shara, who's on the left side of that white line you see down the center of the spacecraft. I think those signs were reversed there. Shara should be on the left. Stafford on the right. There, that's it. Uh, Shara is the command pilot, Stafford the pilot. And there, the bolts have been uh, taken off and Stafford is pushing open his door three hours and 32 minutes after he entered that spacecraft. And there's Shara's door. These two magnificently skilled and trained test pilots who did everything exactly right in time of serious emergency today. They did not eject from that spacecraft, a dangerous procedure at best, but far less dangerous than staying with the spacecraft if those engines had exploded. But as we heard Bob Sharp at St. Louis tell us earlier, he read every indication right in the split second he had and elected not to pull his D-ring, which would have blown he and his co-pilot Stafford out of that spacecraft into the sky for a parachute landing. That system has been tested with dummies, not with live astronauts, and uh, they weren't anxious to test it today, but as we said, it's far better than what might be worse. Sharon and Stafford disconnecting the various plugs that uh, connect their biomedical sensors and their oxygen system. And now Stafford, Tom Stafford, 35, Annapolis graduate, class of 52, emerging from the spacecraft. Wally Shara, Annapolis 45, 42 years old, command pilot climbing out of that spacecraft for the second time. This happened to them October 25th when their Gemini target vehicle blew up. There's Wally Shara. through an experience today that none of our astronauts have gone through before in the four years of our manned space program since Alan Shepard first blasted off of Cape Canaveral then atop a Redstone rocket for a 15-minute suborbital flight downrange. Get a good look there of Stafford and now Shara. As they go back toward the elevator, a couple of disappointed astronauts. As they descend in the elevator, we expect to hear from Jack King at Mission Control, Cape Kennedy. This is Gemini Launch Control at the Cape. Astronauts Wally Shara and Tom Stafford are now out of the Gemini 6 spacecraft. They were helped out of the over the hatch at 33 minutes past the hour. It is expected that shortly after they get, go down the elevator, they will get back to the crew quarters as soon as possible. Uh, we are still looking over our condition at Launch Complex 19. We expect that we will be able to start a news conference some 30 to 40 minutes from this time. This is Gemini Launch Control. And there at the foot of the pad, uh, the foot of the erector on the pad 19, stands the trailer, which will take astronauts Shara and Stafford <clears throat> back to their crew quarters.